Hi everyone, Professor Brunson here. Welcome to the very last learning module and lesson of the semester. It's gonna be on the art of writing headlines, telling and selling the story. The headline that you see uh, in this slide is probably one of the most famous headlines in journalism history from the New York Post, Headless Body and Topless Bar. And it, it in five words, captures uh, what this story is about succinctly, accurately, and in a way that catches people's attention. And that's what a good headline does. So that's what this lesson's about, and let's get right into it. This lesson has three parts. The first part of it is I'm going to teach you the five elements of a good headline. Every good headline has uh, these five elements you're going to learn about. And then I'm going to show you three strategies on how to write good headlines from some of the best headline writers in the country. You're going to learn from the best today. And then finally, the last piece of this lesson is that you're going to write your own headlines for a grade. Going to turn you loose on writing some headlines and web courses, and you'll upload them, and I'll grade them and let you know how you did. I've been writing headlines for 35 years. It's one of the most fun parts of journalism to me is taking the main idea of an 800 word or 1000 word story and accurately and succinctly and creatively summarizing that point into a five, six, seven, eight word headline on top of a story. Uh, this is one of the, the last headlines I wrote while I was still working at the Orlando Sentinel. This was on election night when Orange County got a new school superintendent. And you'll see in circled in red there, uh, the words, the phrase chalked up. And that's one of the strategies I'm gonna teach you with a good headline is figuring out the perfect verb to use. In this case, the story was about Orange County voters electing a new chief of Orange County Public Schools. So it's a school story. So the perfect verb has a school related theme. So I chose chalks up and it got the point across in a very succinct way. And there it is splashed across the top of the local and state page for thousands of readers to see. That's what's cool. You walk into some place where people are eating breakfast, looking at the paper, scanning their phones, and you see a headline that you wrote that a bunch of people are reading. And they're reading the story because you wrote a good headline. That's why they're important. Headline writing is very challenging. And I want to kind of get you set up mentally for this because not everybody is immediately great at it. It takes, a, it takes time, it takes practice, it takes effort, uh, it takes, craft and by that i mean when you write a headline you chisel and chisel and shave and massage and uh, get that headline into about 15 different iterations before it's the perfect headline uh, and so that takes time and effort and energy and discipline and again it takes practice not everybody's great at it when they're first starting out uh, but it's really fun, and I think, again, it's the best part of an editor's job. In this example, when Mall at Millennia opened out in Southwest Orlando a number of years ago, I was working on the business desk at the Sentinel, and the, the, the guy designing the page uh, saw that I had been assigned to edit the story, and he said, Rick, you're only going to have two words for the headline for the story. Think about that, two words to express the main idea of a story. And in this case about Mall at Millennia, they were getting a bunch of new upscale stores at the mall that were going to attract and were designed to attract uh, women with a lot of money. So the two words that I came up with were chic magnet, which was a wordplay on chick magnet. Uh, and, and the page designer really liked it. And uh, the business editor really liked it. And readers really liked it. So sometimes all you get is two words. And you have to quickly on deadline come up with the two best words or three words or four words to tell and sell the story. Now, I have to sell you on the importance of writing good headlines, because frankly, uh, what I see as a journalism teacher and as as the students in our class who work for NSM today, students like Danny and Laura and others, 
uh, will we'll bear out and, and testify to and confirm is that a lot of times when our students write stories, the headline is an afterthought. Uh, they don't put much thought or effort into it. They just kind of slap one on. And here's what you need to understand. Without a good headline, nobody's ever going to read your story. Nobody looks at bylines. They look at headlines. Nobody looks at the byline at the top of a story and go, oh, Rick Brunson wrote that. Or, oh, Monica Seeley wrote that. You know, the only people who do that is Rick Brunson's mom and Monica Seeley's mom. Nobody else cares or reads bylines. They look at headlines. So if you don't put a good headline at the top of your story, nobody's going to read it because people look at headlines and they look at photos. Think about you when you're scanning your thumb across the screen of your iPhone or you're you know, you got your laptop open and you're scrolling down a list of stories. All you are reading are the headlines. And if the headlines catch your attention, they'll make you stop and click and read on the story. If the headlines aren't interesting, they don't do their job, you're just gonna keep scrolling. So this is where all of us writers out there have to stuff our ego. Nobody's gonna read your brilliant 800,000 word feature story if the headline doesn't sell them on it and make them stop and read it. So writing a good headline is the most important words in any story. Headline writing isn't brain surgery, but it's hard because you have to do two main things. In telling and selling the story, you have to identify and locate the central narrative or the main point of the story. You have to have a good, firm grasp and a latch on that. What's the central point? And then you have to summarize that point succinctly, accurately, and with a bit of style. I love this headline uh, that was in the Orlando Sentinel about how uh, you know, being married might keep you from losing your mind. Look at the way it's written. Your spouse may drive you crazy, but your marriage might keep you from losing your mind. And it's married with the perfect picture of this old couple. Uh, and it, it tells me in that headline what the story is about and states it in a way that makes me want to read it. So these are five things that you have to absolutely own if you're going to write a good headline. Number one, non-negotiable, is the headline has to be accurate. You have to express the main point of the story in your headline It's in, in a factual way. And it's by, by that, we mean no typos, no uh, misleading information, no grammar mistakes, no spelling errors, no libel. Your headline absolutely, bottom line, has to be accurate in fact and in tone. Tone means we don't put a ha-ha, funny, cute headline on something that's serious where somebody was murdered or there was a fire that killed a bunch of people and a dog. You don't put a funny, funny, ha-ha headline on that. Likewise, if it's a humorous story, you don't put a serious headline on it. So the headline needs to match the story in fact and in tone. Second part of it is clarity. The headline has to be immediately clear to your audience. If the if the reader has to read the headline twice to go, ah, I didn't get that. What do you think they mean by that? The headline's a failure. The headline has to be clear. It's not just that you get it or that your neighbor gets it. Your readers have to get it, right? A lot of headlines fail because they're not clear. The reader goes for funny and humorous and cute, but the main point of the story is lost and it's it's not clear to the reader. The third part is brevity. Headlines usually are six to eight words. Google will not index headlines that are too long. So you can't write a big old long ass wordy headline. It's gotta be in that neighborhood, that sweet spot of six to eight words. Sometimes, like I said earlier, you get fewer. Fourth point is creativity. The headline creatively captures the main point of the story and the reader's interest. So that's the hard part, is capturing the main point of the story in that six to eight words and doing it in a way that's creative and clever and catches the reader's interest. Lastly, SEO. If it's a story, which 
all stories are these days, they begin on the web. If it's gonna end up in a digital publication, you wanna use key search words in that headline that will make the story easier to find in a Google search. So these five elements, get your head around them. Every headline needs to have them. I don't wanna start off negative, but I gotta say this and we have to deal with this. Errors and headlines are a big freaking deal. It's one thing to make a mistake in the 27th paragraph of a story that no one may ever see or read. When you do it in 48 point bold face type out of the top of the story, it's a billboard for your ignorance. It advertises to everybody, stupid writer, stupid writer, stupid writer, right? So when you make an error in a headline, it's a huge deal. So you want to be careful. You want to be careful. You want to proofread. You want to double check that headline before you hit the post button or else you do things like this. People love tweeting and sharing stupid headlines. And it makes you the dumbass of the day on Twitter when you make a mistake in a headline like the one on the left. You know, cry, city's first baby of 2109 born. Yeah, it's just a typo, but it's a stupid typo. Or the one on the right party divided over sex clams. That's supposed to be sex claims, obviously. Look at how many retweets this headline got. Poor newspaper, poor newspaper editor and headline writer on this story, you were the joke of the day. We don't wanna be the joke of the day. We want people to share headlines for the right reasons. Ouch, uh, this one hits close to home because it's one of ours. Suicide isn't cute and it's not funny. So we shouldn't be making jokes about it in headlines. Aren't you happy to spread suicide awareness? Uh, that's a really uh, tasteless, tacky headline. And again, what's the biggest words in terms of size when you look at this story? It's the headline. So your mistake gets magnified that much more uh, largely. So we wanna be really careful there and make sure that we're being ethical, we're being accurate, and we're using common sense. Speaking of suicide, you can commit professional suicide by writing a really dumb headline like this one, which appeared at ESPN.com uh, a few years back. An NBA player named Jeremy Lin was a rising star and he had a particularly bad night uh, in a game. So the headline writer wrote, chink in the armor. Jeremy Lin is an Asian American. Chink is a derogatory racist term. It's also a play on words and it's stupid. And this headline uh, got so much backlash that the guy who wrote it uh, was fired. He lost his job at ESPN for doing something really stupid with one headline. Think about it, one headline ended his career at ESPN. So it's not worth being stupid and doing things like this. So enough of the bad stuff, I wanna to get to the good stuff. Um, so I wanna take you through a tour of some amazing headlines, the best in the country. So I belong to an organization called ACES. It's the American Society for Editing. And what it is, it's, it's the largest uh, professional organization of professional editors in the country. Editors from all kinds of mediums and media uh, newspapers, television, magazines, uh, public relations, um, all kinds of, anybody that publishes anything has to have an editor. So ACES is a collective of uh, really good editors. And every year ACES has its national headline contest where editors from across the country can submit their headlines, have them judged, and ACES picks the winner. So. What you're about to see are the best headlines in the country as judged by ACES uh, in the latest contest. And while we're watching them, you're gonna identify, we're gonna see three key strategies that these writers used and that you can use to write amazing, effective, excellent headlines. So the big winner in the latest ACES headline contest was NPR News based in Washington, D.C. You've all heard, read, listened to NPR uh, either on, uh, on the radio or, or on, on their website or on your phone. 
uh, they were judged as an organization to have the best headlines in the country uh, in the last year. And so one key strategy that they use, and it's the number one strategy in writing a good headline, is what we call wordplay. In wordplay, we express the main idea of the story using some kind of play on words, such as a reference to a well-known idiomatic phrase or some kind of reference to pop culture. In this headline, which was one of the submissions, it uses a brilliant wordplay on the phrase Jane Doe. So this story is about a New Hampshire winner, uh, a lottery winner, a woman who won the lottery up in New Hampshire who wanted to stay anonymous. And she sued because she didn't want her identity uh, made known to the public. Lottery winners usually uh, are made known to the public. The state trots them out. There's a big press conference. She didn't want all that. She wanted to stay anonymous. So the headline in the story made a play on the fact that this woman is now suddenly very rich. She's Jane Doe. Doe being <laughs> another word for money. So brilliant headline, wordplay. It's a great strategy. Here's another great NPR headline that uses wordplay as a strategy. Kids these days, unruly goats graze hell across suburban Boise. It's a story about how these goats have gotten loose in the city, around the city in Idaho, and they've grazed all the grass and nub, you know, ate it all down to the nub, and it uses a couple of key wordplays. Kids these days, right? Everybody's heard that phrase. You're complaining about young people, right? It plays off of goats. Young goats are called kids. Kids these days. Unruly goats graze hell. Another word play off of a, a idiom, raising hell, right? So it takes two idiomatic phrases, ties them together into the main idea of what this story is about. Does so effectively, beautifully, brilliantly. I wish I had written it. The second place winner in the ACES National Headline Contest was the New York Times. Uh, and they deploy a strategy at the Times that's very effective that we call writing to the picture. You'll notice that in this example, you see the words in the headline connected to the main idea of the photo. So this was a photo about a Bernie Sanders rally in New York City on the coldest day of the year. So what do you see in the picture? You see these Bernie Sanders uh, fans, followers. He has very uh, ec excited, uh, hardcore fans and, uh, and followers of his candidacy. Uh, and they're standing there in the freezing cold of the coldest day in New York City. And then look at the headline, in New York and feeling the burr, right? That plays off of uh, one of Bernie Sanders campaign slogans, feeling the burn. So you have coldest day in New York, campaign slogan coming together, marrying the main idea of the story with the main idea in the photo, brilliant. The New York Times does this not only in print, but they do it in uh, online too, in all of their digital platforms, both their website, their app, uh, their Facebook, uh, platforms, uh, you know, actually, and you may know this, the New York Times now has m more digital subscribers than they have print subscribers, and they make more money online than they do in print, which is which is an amazing thing. They've made the turn, and we need other newspapers to do that too, but they've done it successfully at the New York Times. And this strategy of writing to the picture, they do really well. Look at the uh, story on the left out of Germany, see the photo there of that German high-speed uh, highway known as the Autobahn, right? So you see the picture in the headline right below it. A speed limit on the Autobahn, not so fast, many Germans say, right? And in the story on the right, it's married to the picture. The headline says, he knows the star's dirty laundry because he washes it. The headline captures the main idea of the story and the main idea of the photo at the same time creating visual impact for the viewer, making them stop and read the story. Great job. These two stories are not from the last year, but I love them because they're, again, great examples of writing a headline to the picture. On the one on the left, uh, you've got a story out of the Olympics, the Summer Olympics of, of 2016, where you had two 
uh, twin sisters from the German track team uh, who kind of conspired to run together and cross the finish line together hand in hand. But their countrymen said this was all bogus. They should have tried their best and not tried for a photo moment. Uh, so there was a lot of backlash on it. So look at the photo and then look at the headline and how they merge together. Twins finish marathon hand in hand, but their country says they crossed a line. Brilliant. Love it. Look at the one on the right. Photo of a bathroom in New York City merged with the headline. With few public toilets, New York has no place to go if you have to go. Love it. Brilliant. Main idea of the story captured in the words in the headline, married with the image and the photo that you see. Love it. The third place finisher uh, in the ACES National Headline Contest was actually an organization that I personally think writes the best headlines in the country. They're the, they're the best uh, at, at writing headlines, I think. They came in third place this year, probably because they've won first and second place so many years in the past that somebody decided, you know, we're tired of them winning all the time, so we're going to give them third place. They're, they're awesome headline writers at the LA Times. And they this headline and, and what I'm, the few I'm going to show you after this tie into the third strategy for writing a good headline, and that's selecting the perfect verb, right? What do we mean by that is use a verb, a verb as we know in any kind of writing, the verb powers the sentence. The verb is the energy. The verb is the juice. The verb is what makes any sentence go. And so when you're writing a headline, pick the perfect verb to match the main idea of the story. So in a story about California dairies losing a lot of money because of this trade war with China, look at the verb that they use. State dairies getting creamed in trade war. It's a story about dairies, so the perfect verb is creamed. Brilliant. Look at this piece of work. Pot adds a toke of genius. Beautiful wordplay. What are they playing off of? They're playing off the phrase, the idiomatic phrase, stroke of genius. But it's a story about pot. So the perfect verb is toke of genius. Love it. Oh, my, my, my. Check out this beauty. Hairspray, the musical, has not lost its hold. Ah! That's great, and merge perfectly with a picture of four bouffanted actresses. It's great, beautiful. And sorry, I'm gonna just keep showing you LA Times headlines because again, I think they're the best. Look at this headline at the top on a story about the failures of DNA testing when trying to solve crimes. When genes don't fit. False starts in search for Golden State Killer reveal pitfalls of DNA testing. Amazing, what's the word play there? Jeans like you wear on your on your body. Jeans don't fit. Look at the one, the headline at the bottom. Pop songs with a good algorithm. What's the word play there? It's playing off the word rhythm. Great job. Oh, wow, I love this headline. Look at the one at the top. Vroom with a view. It's on a story about touring Europe on a motorcycle, right? Look at that. Not only does it deploy so many great strategies, number one wordplay, playing off of the phrase room with a view, it marries perfectly with the photo. So the headline was written uh, with the picture in mind. And then it uses another strategy that's kind of old school that we call alliteration. Look at the alliteration, vroom with a view. That headline really sings. And then look at the one at the bottom. Say aloha to their little friends, tourists from nations with strict gun laws cut loose at Hawaii shooting range. Great job at wordplay. It plays off a common pop culture reference from the movie Scarface. Everybody's gonna know it and it works perfectly with the main idea of the story. Bravo, brilliant job, LA Times. In 2005, I had a chance to go work and join the copy desk of the Los Angeles Times. And I turned it down because I didn't want to move my family all the way from Florida to California. Um, 
but I almost did it because I would have had the chance to work with uh, some amazing people, one being my good friend, Tim Lynch, but the other being uh, probably the best headline writer in the United States. Her name is Laura Dominic. Uh, this is a Laura Dominic headline right here. <laughs> everybody, know, everybody knows California traffic is horrible. They have a lot of accidents. And when they do, you, you think we have traffic jams here, California. There is no traffic jams like California traffic jams. So um, a semi-tractor trailer uh, overturned and it was carrying a bunch of fruit. And here's the headline. Big rig carrying fruit crashes on 210 freeway creates jam. Oh, that is exquisite. That's an exquisite headline. Great job, Laura Dominic, LA Times. You guys are the best. Of course, wacky weed is legal uh, in, in every way in California. So they write a lot of they write a lot of marijuana uh, stories, and and I love this one. You talk about the perfect verb. The world's fastest stoner does his part to blunt the lazy pot smoker stereotype. Perfect verb. Nail that headline. So I get it. By now you're going, okay, Brunson, okay, Brunson, LA Times, LA Times, we got it. They, they write great headlines. Let's move on. Okay, so let's do move on. I'm going to show you some of uh, the examples of some of the regional uh, local news organizations that placed in the ACES uh, National Headline Contest. And this was one from the Omaha World Herald out in the Midwest. Um, instrument need a fix? Get him on the horn. Uh, about a guy who fixes instruments and look at what's the strategy here. The headline matches the photo. It's written to the picture. And it also uses a great wordplay. Get him on the horn means get him on the phone. But it also, in the context of this story, is about speaks to a guy who, who fixes and repairs instruments for a living. It's a great headline. Another uh, news organization that did well in the contest is the Dallas Morning News. Um, so as you can imagine, they're in Texas. So the whole, uh, issue and topic of, uh, president Trump's border wall, uh, is a big deal, especially down there because they're on the border and they did a story that showed, uh, you know, the, the cartels always find a way, uh, no matter what kind of barrier that you try to erect. Uh, so the headline on this, which also uh, is a great word play and matches the photo is where there's a wall, there's a way, uh, brilliantly put. So this organization got an honorable mention in the ACES National Headline Contest. And uh, this was one of their entries. It's, it's great. Uh, Eels on wheels, uh, a truck filled with slimy hagfish crashes on Oregon Coast Highway, coating vehicles in goo. Um, so eels on wheels actually uh, plays on a word play, meals on wheels, right? And then it's written to the picture, which lets you see the eels in the trunk of this car. It's really well done. So two of the three strategies uh, that, that make effective headlines were deployed on this award-winning headline. Okay, so those are the headline winners from the ACES National Headline Contest, along with the three strategies uh, that are commonly deplo deployed by excellent headline writers to write good, effective headlines. So do you remember them? What was number one? It was wordplay. Number two, write to the picture. Number three, selecting and choosing the perfect verb for your headline that ties in with the main idea of the story, right? So those are your three. So I'm gonna show you some other good headlines that I've collected from recent times and not so recent times. Uh, and I'd like you as you watch them to think in your head, I'm not gonna answer it for you. I want you to see and identify for yourself and say to yourself, what was the headline strategy or strategies that they used? Here's one from the Sunday Times of London. Do you see what they did? So I'll give you a hint on this one and then I'm gonna shut up. They obviously used wordplay. Okay, this is no time to die. Nobody wants to die in a pandemic. And that's the name of the new Bond film. So there's a pop culture reference. There's an idiomatic reference in the wordplay. And then it's married and tied to the picture of the actor who plays James Bond. 
well played Sunday Times of London. The next uh, couple are from USA Today, both digital and in print. Take a look at this headline. What strategy did they use? Check out these two headlines, one in print and one digital. Do you see the strategy that they used in both? I'm a big fan of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it's the most trusted newspaper in America, and uh, they do an excellent job with their headlines. I have a digital and a print subscription, so the, the, the Wall Street Journal's content's coming into my house and on my phone and on my laptop every day. Uh, so I'm about to show you a string of just excellent Wall Street Journal headlines. Look at this one. What's the strategy that they used? Strategies, a couple of them. I used a couple of strategies here on a story about fishing in Patagonia. Here's a big story about uh, movie theaters and how they're installing recliners and much more comfortable seating in many of their theaters. Two strategies in play here. Can you see them? The one on the left, the left may make you groan a little bit because it's so punny, uh, but I think it's I think it's great because you see the puck in the photo, it marries uh, the 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 headline marries the the main idea in the photo. It also marries the main idea of the story that their team sucks this year, uh, and then the headline on the right is just absolutely positively uh, brilliant. It's just so smart. It's a story about how uh, people don't know how to use apostrophes anymore. Boy, I can, <laughs> y'all know that from taking this class. Uh, people don't know how to use apostrophe, they don't know how to use punctuation. But look how the headline is written. It is littered intentionally <laughs> with apostrophe errors to make the point. Ah, I wish I'd written that. It's brilliant, it's gorgeous. Mwah. TV stations write good headlines too. This is one out of Action News Jacks up in Jacksonville. I love this. Is this a Florida story or is it not a Florida story? Possum breaks in the liquor store, gets drunk as a skunk. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Wordplay, right to the picture. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I'm going to show you a couple of classics from uh, our old campus newspaper, The Central Florida Future, which uh, died in 2016. May she rest in peace. I miss her greatly, uh, but some great headlines. Perfect verb here. SGA slices pizza from campaigns. Uh, you you may be young, too young to remember this, but there was a time not too long ago when SGA during the spring elections would bribe people to vote with pizza. They would like, if you vote, uh, we'll give you a pizza. If you vote twice, we'll give you two pizzas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it was it, it was pretty slimy. Uh, but SGA uh, got rid of that uh, practice. And this headline uses the perfect verb to get the point across in the headline for this story. Got to give a shout out on this great headline to my former student, Patrick Brewer, who now works for Sp uh, Fox Sports, actually, down in South Florida. Um, and this was a story about uh, how to get more money back when you turn your textbooks in at the end of the semester. And I love it, maximizing bang for your book. It's a great wordplay, writes to the picture. And of course the, the automatic phrase is getting bang for your buck, right? Love it, great job, Patrick. I love it when a headline makes me sing. This is a great job of a headline that sings, it's from the Washington Post. Chili's, the restaurant chain, had a data breach uh, a while back. And the headline, I want my data back, data back, data back. I want my data back, data back, data back. <laughs> Chili's hit by data breach. Makes a great play on their ad campaign at the time. Great headline. There's a fantastic wordplay headline here. 
Fifty Shades of Way, of course, playing off pop culture reference to Fifty Shades of Grey. Nice job, Men's Health Magazine. This is a great headline and an important story about baseline mammograms for women. Uh, when you get a baseline mammogram, when you're younger, you're a younger woman, it can help doctors later on uh, when they're trying to help you uh, keep uh, you know, tabs on the health of your breasts uh, as you get older in life. And so uh, the, the headline of the story was breast case scenarios, which of course makes a play off of best case scenarios. Great job, uh, Oprah Magazine. Here's another great magazine um, headline on a story uh, about getting over your fear of the water so you can learn how to swim. Instead of treading water, the wordplay is dreading water, and it's, it marries perfectly with the photo. Nice job. Did I mention that headline writing is fun? <laughs> this is a great fun headline about a story about the circus coming to town. Circus checks in, unpacks its trunks. Great wordplay, great job writing through the picture. Brilliantly done. This is another one of those important health stories that ABC News did on its website to prevent colon cancer, get your butt to the doctor about the need for uh, annual checkups, especially if you're over a certain age. I include these two examples because they're, uh, they're, they're a great pair that shows how you can be brilliant and you can do something goofy if you're not careful with just the stroke of uh, your keypad, right? The one on the left is from my friend Tiffany Th uh, Thiessen. She's, she's a web producer at the Sentinel, wonderful person. We've worked with her for 20 years. She's fantastic at what she does. This is a great headline on a story about five guys getting into a fist fight, literally at Five Guys, the hamburger restaurant. Brilliantly played. It's almost one of those headlines that write itself. Uh, but then on the right, you see a, a front page headline at the, Tam at the, at the Orlando Sentinel, uh, excuse me, that um, just one key stroke of, you know, one wrong letter flopped out of place, you know, gets tweeted, gets shared, and makes you look bad especially because it's on the front page of your paper. Uh, you know, we're not trying to find the next president of UFC. You know, we're not looking for a martial arts president. We're looking for a president of UCF. Got it? Um, this is what happens when your headlines are written in Chicago. Uh, not, not, not good. The next few slides, I wanna address the issue of taste. Because sometimes there, there you can bump up and you're, you can bump yourself into a gray area when it comes to the question of taste. You don't want to go over the line. You have to think of your audience. You have to think of your publication's reputation, um, and you have to, you know, figure out: Am I deploying these strategies, wordplay especially, in a way that goes too far? And so these next few headlines are headlines that could either be construed as brilliant or in bad taste, um, depending on the reader. So here's one from the Washington Post. Scientists thinks Uranus might be full of surprises. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I didn't like this headline. It usually makes a lot of my students laugh. Um, it's completely 100% accurate. This man was found with crack cocaine in his, as Forrest Gump would say, his buttocks. Um, and so the headline is completely accurate, but I think it, and you just heard me chuckle there, I think it, it kind of takes advantage of this guy uh, in, a, in a down moment of his existence just for a laugh. So maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a tad exploitive. You may think it's brilliant. It's debatable. One key question when you're thinking about wordplay is whether the person who's the main subject of the story is injured or harmed in some way. Uh, we really don't like to write funny headlines about people who are injured 
harmed, killed. You don't want to be cute with things like that. This one is kind of in one of those gray areas. Arizona psychic hit my car, says he never saw it coming. Um, is it brilliant or is it in bad taste? The, the, the you know, the, the psychic was hit by a car. So what do you think? I was glad to learn that the United Kingdom Prime Minister, British Prime Minister, uh, Boris Johnson was able to get out of the hospital. If you're following the news, uh, COVID-19 got him and first he had mild symptoms, but then uh, it got pretty serious. He was in the intensive care unit in a London hospital and it was touch and go for a couple days, but he got out. He's fine now, which is great to hear. Um, this was back before he was elected prime minister. This is from The Sun, which is a tabloid newspaper uh, in the United Kingdom. And the headline is Floppy Johnson can't get an election. Uh, floppy playing off the uh, fact that he changes his mind sometimes. He's kind of like uh, President Trump. What he says today may not be what he says tomorrow. Um, or like any, a lot of politicians flip-flop. So it's playing off of that. Uh, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, is it over the line? The, the next few headlines that I'm going to show you are just examples of things you absolutely don't want to do. Because again, a headline is the first thing that people see on a story. It's prominent. So your mistakes there are amplified and magnified. So you don't want to make errors. Uh, you don't want to libel anybody. You don't want to you know, exercise bad taste. This I really think is a bad taste headline from a, from a news organization that's usually highly respected. Uh, they did not have a bad or a good day on this one, on this headline. Read it and see if you can see why. So this headline had an out and out error, big mistake, big mistake and a large point headline. Look at the headline and then read the lead in the story. Do you see how they not match up? The headline is false. He's not running for Orange County Mayor. He's running for Orange County Sheriff. Orange County Mayor's Jerry Demings. Here's exactly why you don't want to write goofy headlines uh, because you get roasted on social media. So this was a Chicago station that uh, reported that the Olympics, the Winter Olympics, were being played at P.F. Chang's, which is a restaurant. <laughs> uh, the, the Olympics were actually in Pyeongchang in Korea. So, yeah, not good. And then it gets tweeted, and everybody laughs at you for being an idiot. This is why punctuation is important. There's a really big difference between having first-hand job experience and having your first hand job experience. <laughs> big, big difference. Uh, so, you know, it, it's important that we use words in the right way, that we know how to spell, that we know vocabulary, that we know how to use punctuation so that we don't do goofy things like this. These headlines are bad because they were intentional. Uh, the person who wrote them were just just careless, thoughtless, thought they were being funny when all they were being was acting like a 15 year old. Uh, the headline on the left is from a newspaper in Great Britain. Ghouls, girls school still offering something special, head. And when, what they're meaning is the head of the girls school was saying that single sex education for girls still offers a, a, a special kind of learning experience. And that's not what this headline says. And the writer knew that. The headline from the right is from the Central Florida Future uh, on a story about the Animal Rights Club. And I remember when this story published, the, the, the kid, Bruce Raven, whose byline is on the story, uh, came walking into my office with a copy of the paper and the first words out of his mouth was, look what they did to me. Look what they did to me. I'm not going to be able to use this story in my portfolio or to ever show an employer because they thought they were being funny writing a headline that made a wordplay on masturbation. Uh, ha ha ha, real funny. But you ruined this story 
uh, for the writer. His byline, his name is on it, and because the headline writer was stupid, uh, they ruined something for him. All of his work on that w was ruined. Uh, this is just one of those headlines where the writer wasn't thinking. It's a story about Miles Jack, uh, who used to be a quarterback. Um, I'm sorry, he wasn't a quarterback. He, he was, he's, a, 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 he's a football player for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, he's a linebacker. And, uh, and his last name was Jack, Miles Jack. And uh, he's a rookie. So he had a good first game. And the headline is Jack off to a promising start. Uh, I like to say mumble when you write a headline because the way you hear it come out of your mouth is going to be the way that it's read by the reader and jack off is not something that you want in a headline. Uh, I have to say that if I was this young woman's father, uh, my lawyer would be calling the newspaper over this headline. Um, she is Miss Kansas Outstanding Teen and they took a phrase uh, out of the story uh, and, and made it the headline and then, you know, paired with her picture. Uh, they either did this intentionally or thoughtlessly. Neither one is very good. Um, and I think she has grounds for uh, a damage a lawsuit here. Really do. A lot of dumb headlines are dumb because they state the obvious, like this one from the Washington Post. Southwest says passengers slow to return after death. No kidding. If you're dead, you're dead. You're not returning anywhere. Here's some more dumb headlines that state the obvious. A reason for odor found at sewer plant. Uh, you think? Federal agents raid gun shops, find weapons. <laughs> And then the one at the bottom, I love this one. This was from a Florida newspaper. Journalists say voters hold key to November election. Ha! No kidding, I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was up to the voters to decide who's gonna, who's gonna win. Yeah, just don't, don't state the obvious in a headline. It makes you look stupid. Even the, the greats can stumble. So keep this in mind. Even the greats can stumble. Here's a pro tip, mumble when you write, right? Mumble when you write a headline to see how it sounds. Read this one from the New York Times. Louisville might rename Papa John's Cardinal Stadium after racial slur. That makes it sound like they're gonna put a big old fat racial slur on the side of the stadium for everybody to see. That's not what they mean. What they mean is after Papa John uttered a racial slur, Louisville might rename the stadium, not call it Papa John Stadium anymore, call it something else. But that's not the way this headline reads. Finally, here is the wrong way to write to the picture. <laughs> this is from a newspaper a couple of years ago who announced to their thousands of readers that Spike Lee was dead at 95. Spike Lee is still very much alive and making films. The person who died was Stan Lee, S-T-A-N. Uh, don't advertise your ignorance to thousands of readers by making a mistake like that. So thanks for hanging in there all the way to the end on this, our lesson on headline writing. That's the lesson. So now it's your turn to write some headlines. I want you to click on the assignments tab to the left in web courses and there you're gonna find a headline writing assignment where you're gonna read some stories, write some headlines, some good headlines that, this, that deploy the strategies you've learned today. Remember, there are five elements to every good effective headline. Go back and review those. And there are three primary headline writing strategies that will result in a good effective headline. Good luck, I look forward to seeing what, uh, what you write and I hope you have a great week. Stay healthy, stay safe.